to the Mornington Peninsula Regional Gallery, Creativity Online. My name's Jill, I'm the Education Officer at the Gallery, and today I would like to talk to you about the fabulous work of an artist in our collection called Vera Mola. She lives on the peninsula and is deeply inspired by the creatures that live in the sea, not only around the peninsula, but in seas all over the world and she does work some of her work is three-dimensional she works in polymer clay and other other sculptural materials um, and she does paintings and the work that we have in our collection she has worked in collage where she's cut out bits and pieces out of magazines and created works that way she started her career as a microbiologist using science to study the, the beauty and wonder of creatures that live in the sea um, but then she went to art school and she decided that she would rather celebrate the beauty of these creatures and the wonders of science through using her imagination and art. Don't you love the way that Vera Mola has torn and cut from images in magazines and found things with interesting patterns and textures and then she's put them together in such a way that this looks like a scientific natural history display of, of underwater plants and animals, but they're all made up. None of these are actually real creatures. I think she might have used an image of a giraffe on this one here. You might notice that she stuck them down in such a way that they're, they're slightly raised and they leave a little shadow underneath them, which makes it look even more real. You might like to choose to do that when you do your collage. One of the many spectacular marine creatures that inspires Vera Moller's art making is a creature called a nudibranch. And this is going to inspire our art making today too. So, you may know about nudibranchs, so lucky, lucky you. And if you haven't, then today is your lucky day because you get to find out about these magnificent creatures. That live in the oceans all over the world. Um, they live from the Arctic to the Antarctic. They live all around the peninsula too. Some of them are this big, maybe four or five centimetres, and some of them are this big maybe up to about 60 centimeters or so and the thing about them is that they are the most incredibly decorated and patterned and gorgeous creatures you're ever likely to see in all your life they're just the most beautiful things so the word nudibranch might make you giggle a little bit it's got nudie in it which means naked and branch means gills so they all have branching structures on them, which is where the gills are, but they're not protected at all. And so that's why they're called nudibranchs. All nudibranchs have tentacles on them called rhinophores, and these are their sensory organs to detect various chemicals in the environment around them. Some of them they can detect light, but very few of them actually have eyes. Nudibranchs don't have a shell, and so they've had to develop other means of protection. Some of them are really well camouflaged and so they look like the corals and the sponges that they hang about with because this is what they eat. And some are poisonous and so they advertise this with very, very bright colours and patterns and this is to show their predators that they are poisonous and not to try eating them. Some of them can swim but most of them move very slowly across the seabed or the coral where they live. Some nudibranchs feed on different marine creatures that have stinging cells, such as Portuguese man of wars, and then they can pass those stinging cells through their gut and into their own skin. Nudibranchs have tongues with teeth on them called radula. It's a bit like sandpaper and they scrape their food and then they suck it up. And most of them just have one food source. They just eat off the one sponge or the one type of coral and some of them get their colour from the food source that they eat. So in that way, two individuals from the same species can be different colours. They live for uh, between a few weeks or up to a year, depending on the species. And all nudibranchs are carnivorous predators. So they don't eat plants at all. They eat things like sponges, which look like plants, but they are animals. And they eat barnacles and anemones and corals. And they eat the eggs of other nudibranchs as well. This one has a hood that it throws out over its prey and captures it that way and then sucks it up and eats it. One type of tropical nudibranch is solar powered. It feeds on soft corals and it's able to remove the algae from the coral and to transfer it to its own skin where the algae keeps on living very happily. And the algae provides the nudibranch with sugars that it makes 
with energy from the sun. All nudibranchs are hermaphrodite, which means they're male and female at the same time. So they just have to meet up with any one of their own species if they feel like having babies. A few give birth to live young, but most lay their eggs in these really beautiful circular patterns on the sea floor. They lay their eggs in a special jelly that expands once it hits the salt water. And they lay hundreds of eggs at one time and they crawl round and round in a circle as they lay them. Here are four that I've made up using bits and pieces I've cut out of magazines. I just used ordinary magazines like this and um, went to town making all sorts of cutting out all sorts of shapes. You need scissors and a glue and paper. Um, I haven't stuck these ones down so I can show you how I made them. This one here has got lots of, has got the middle of its body cut out of this paper here that had beautiful colours in it. And then uh, the tentacles as you can see are just bits cut out of that paper. And this around here is someone's hair. It was a photo of someone who had all beautiful curly hair. So I've cut that out there. Um, this one I was inspired by a stripy one that I saw. This also is someone's hair that I cut out. I don't know if their face is still there. No. There are no limits. You can just cut out all sorts of crazy shapes and colours. They're, they're all vaguely, um, you know, this sort of shape, oval sort of shape. Just have a crazy time with colours and shapes and patterns and make your own amazing, sensational creatures from the deep. Here's a collage that I've done along the lines of the, of the Vera Mola collages in our collection, where she has cut out bits and pieces of colored paper, patterned paper, and put it together to look alike marine creatures. You know, she doesn't want to copy marine creatures exactly. So I've done the same thing here. I haven't stuck these down so I can show you how I've made them. So then I found a piece of yellow. It happens to have someone's face in, in it as well, but that's okay. Here's a bit of dark I found, so I put the yellow on top. I'd cut these zigzags. Then I put the purple bun. And then I just cut out some colors, some white ones I thought would contrast nicely with the purple. I found different greens and I cut them into shapes, vaguely looking a little bit like plant-like shapes. And I've turned this into something that looks a bit like a piece of seaweed. This was a big um, front cover of one of the magazines on the weekend with a crumpled picture of the American flag. So I've cut out shapes also that look a bit plant-like and just stuck them all. I'm going to stick them all down here to look a bit plant-like. This looks a bit jellyfish-like. These are just some of my offcuts from cutting up the shapes. So that looks a bit like tentacles. This was a man in a patterned jacket that I just cut into shapes and I've arranged to look a bit like a worm or something. So you can have fun going through any magazines you've got at home and finding colors that appeal to you and cutting them out and rearranging them to look a bit like things you might find or you might not find in rock pools or down the beach near where you live. See you next time. Thank you.